Mark Rogers TV on round five of the 2013 NFL Draft. What we're doing here is scanning the round. We're picking out those players that we saw extensively in college and giving our take. That doesn't mean these are the only players we saw play in college, but the only players that we really have a strong perspective and strong take on. Certainly, we ask you to join the conversation. Certainly, talk about the players that we're talking about, but in addition, Bring up those players, give us some insight, some information, some perspective on those players we're not talking about. For example, at uh, pick 152, the New York Giants select uh, Cooper Taylor, a safety from Richmond. Never saw him play, not going to talk about him. We invite you to talk about him if you have something on Cooper Taylor. We start back at pick 135 where the Jacksonville Jaguars select uh, Denard Robinson, quarterback in Michigan wide receiver running back in the pros. Denard Robinson, one of the most prolific offensive players in the history of college football, throwing and running. We think Michigan and Brady Hoke finally got it right, and they were forced to due to injury in getting Denard Robinson to the running back and wide receiver positions as a senior late in the process. Of course, he hurt his shoulder, couldn't throw, and uh, against Iowa and Ohio State, he was devastating. If you saw, in particular, the game against the Buckeyes, he ripped up Ohio State for 120 yards rushing in the first half. They got away from him, tried to pass the ball with Devin Gardner, and uh, the Buckeyes came back to win that game. But Denard Robinson in the pros, where does he fit? Well, he's not going to be an every-down player. He's not going to be an every-down back, but he's got elite athleticism, speed, acceleration out of a break. He's tremendous. Uh, he's going to have to learn how to run out of different positions, as he started to do at Michigan late in the season in 2012 because he was forced to wide receiver and running back. He can catch the football, but I don't believe he can play wide receiver unless he really studies up and improves uh, catching the football, snatching it out of the air, being able to fight defenders for the football. Yes, he's going to be, be a passing option but not on every down where he can go out there and line up at wide receiver on first and second down. Denard Robinson to Jacksonville at pick 135. We drop it down to pick 137. Seattle selecting nose tackle Jesse Williams of Alabama. The native Australian was a brute force for the national championship team in 2012 and before that. Just a run stuffer, a guy that is physical, not a great top-end athlete. This is about where he should have been selected. Uh, Jesse Williams going to Seattle where he should be able to be a stout force for the Seahawks as that defense continues to be one of the best in the NFL. At uh, pick 140, we've got Arizona taking Stephen Taylor, uh, running back from Stanford, and of course the Stanford resurgence under Harbaugh and then continuing on uh, had to do and is uh, credited to the passing game. But let's keep in mind, even when Andrew Luck was there, Stephen Taylor was rushing for uh, well over a 1,000 yards and multiple uh, double-digit touchdown seasons. That last season at Stanford, 1,530 yards and 15 touchdowns. And the deal was that Andrew Luck was gone. They tried to break in Josh Nunes at quarterback. He failed, so the pressure was really on Taylor, and the defense is really keying on Taylor. Kevin Gogan came in, performed admirably as a true freshman at quarterback as Stanford finished uh, – winning the Rose Bowl, losing just a couple football games, and uh, finishing in the top five or six in the country. But Gogan had the pressure off because Taylor had the defenses keying on him. So when a running back can produce at that level, when the defense knows the passing game is struggling, the quarterback is young, that says a lot for Taylor. He's north and south, no nonsense, goes straight ahead, really knows the blocking schemes and knows how to play off blocks, and he's an effective runner now going to Seattle. Okay, next up we've got uh, Micah Hyde going to Green Bay at pick 159. Micah Hyde played free safety for Iowa. This guy is a ball hawk. Uh, no question about that. He knows where the football is. He's got instincts. He's not afraid of contact, will enforce the run, not a top-end athlete, but very good, very good. That's not a concern there. When we talk about Iowa athletes, sometimes there's a concern at the next level, but certainly not with Micah Hyde, again, going to Green Bay at pick 159. Then we've got uh, at pick 161, the Denver Broncos selecting Tavares King, wide receiver from Georgia. Top-end athlete, top-end speed, average hands. 
average hands and route running, and the thing that concerns us here, despite the presence of one of the best quarterbacks in the country, Aaron Murray, Tavares King never upped his numbers. He pretty much always stayed in that 45 to 50 catch range, less than 1,000 yards, single-digit touchdowns. Let's see as a senior, 42 receptions, 950 yards, and nine touchdowns for Tavares King. So his productivity, his last three seasons, pretty much stayed the same. He never broke into that elite level. But Tavares King should be a good passing option for Peyton Manning in Denver. All right, now we go to a guy that we watched play a lot in 2012 as he finally got the starting job at Florida. So Miami, a pick 164, selects running back Mike Gillisley. This guy just put him in the mold of Stephen Taylor back at Stanford. Mike Gillisley had to... Um, play second fiddle to Tim Tebow, even though Tebow's a quarterback. He obviously was the main rusher there uh, during his time, uh, despite Gillisley coming in as a top-flight recruit, five-star recruit. Uh, then it was Chris Rainey and Jeff Demps that got most of the carries and attention there in the Florida offense. Uh, Gillisley did play, still got some carries. He got 60, 80, 90 carries a season until his senior season. And he came out in the preseason and said, this is finally my time as a senior. I'm going to gain uh, 1,500 yards, 24 touchdowns. Well, he fell short of that, just about 1,100 yards, and uh, had, let's see, 10 touchdowns rushing for Gillisley. But let's keep in mind, the Florida offense was void of playmakers. A good tight end in Jordan Reed. But besides that, Jeff Driscoll at quarterback was asked to do little with his arm. They were throwing the fo football 12 and 14 and 15 times a game. Gillisley was taking on the best defenses in the country, South Carolina, uh, LSU, Texas A&M, Georgia, go down the line, and he had to grind it out. The defenses knew that they didn't have to worry about the pass. They focused on Gillisley. He still picked up the tough yardage. He is not an elite athlete, not going to be a great runner in this league, going to be very capable, though, uh, in that Miami of offense of providing – third and one conversions, and he's a good back. Again, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, when everybody knew Mike Gillisley was going to get the football. We're going to finish up here in the uh, fifth round, staying with the Florida Gators and going to their kicker, Caleb Sturgis. He, like Gillisley, going to the Miami Dolphins at pick 166. Sturgis, uh, we didn't see in running through the games from the last couple of years, certainly in 2012, and can't remember him needing to convert a kick to uh, change a win or a tie or a loss or a tie into a victory. Didn't see that kind of pressure kick from Caleb Sturgis. Certainly not his fault. But when it comes to being accurate, 22 of 26, 24 of 28 the last two years. Most notably, though, Caleb Sturgis is a junior. Uh, his touchback rate was just 17%. He worked on it, improved the leg strength, and up to that mark to 45% as a senior. So that's key to him being drafted in this position. When a kicker gets drafted in the fifth round, they're typically something special. Caleb Sturgis gets his shot with the Miami Dolphins at pick 166. Again, would love to hear what you have to say about these particular players and a lot of guys that we watched in college football, but... Uh, have a limited take on, like a Kenny Still selected by New Orleans at pick 144, the wide receiver from Oklahoma. Uh, a great freshman year, and then he played out productively uh, in the wide receiver role with Landry Jones there at quarterback at Oklahoma. Tell us what you think about these players and more in the fifth round right here on Mark Rogers TV.